What's up? I'm Coach Dan Blewett. In today's video, let's cover this question that I get a lot, which is, have I started playing softball too late? Do I have too much ground to cover in catching up on my skills? When should I have started playing? And do I even have a chance to make the varsity team, to play college softball, to have the career that I envision? All right, so if you're new here, I'm Coach Dan. I'm a former pro baseball player. I used to own a baseball and softball academy. I had softball teams, baseball teams. So I have a lot of experience seeing young players develop. And I've gotten this question over email. I've got it in the comments. If you go through my videos, you'll see a bunch of comments like this where play players are asking me, especially around tryout time, you know, hey, I've only been playing softball for a couple of years. Should I just give up because, you know, I feel like I'm behind or I took a couple of years off and now I really want to play. Um, is it too late? Am I wasting my time? All that sort of stuff. So the way I want to cover this is number one, let's talk about how hard softball and baseball are. They're really, really hard sports. So understand that if you just want to play at a low level and you just want to pick it up and you haven't played at, say, you're 13 or 14 or 15 and, uh, you know, you don't have a big, long background, you didn't start playing when you're eight, you can still be reasonably good, have a fun time, maybe make your high school teams and enjoy the game. To be a college player or a pro player one day, if that's your goal, it takes a really long road to build those skills. And you have to have a lot of rest requisite skills like athleticism, really good coordination. And softball is a hard sport to build those. There are a lot of other sports that are easier to pivot to, like lacrosse is easier because it takes a little bit less coordination. You have to be fast and agile, but there's less of the really high level skills. Just like you can't pick up a golf club and be a, a PGA Tour player or a college quality player in just a year or two. It's a really hard technical sport. Softball has a lot of technical skills and you can't necessarily catch up overnight. That being said, um, there is a lot of ground you can cover if you still have some youth left. So if you're picking up softball at 16 or 17, it's going to be really hard to make the varsity squad and to be at that level when you don't have a really significant background. If you're picking up softball at 10, 11, 12, and you're comparing yourself to players who started playing when they were six, seven, or eight, that is not a big deal. You can easily make up a lot of ground if you work really hard, you know, and train yourself and, and are more dedicated than the players who started maybe, you know, three or four years earlier than you. I think the middle ground where you're 14 and 15, it's a little bit tougher to figure out if you're going to have the skills if you didn't start playing earlier. Now, that being said, I played with a, a, a teammate in the past who picked up baseball at 16 and he played division one baseball. He was a really athletic guy. Uh, I think he played basketball before that. So he was always really active, had a lot of skills. And for whatever reason, he didn't it, it wasn't that hard for him to pivot to baseball and was really good at it and played a, a mid level D1 and was a good player. Um, and you'll hear those stories with softball as well. If you're a really great athlete, it's not as hard to make that transition. Um, you know, but you still need some amount of time. He was more of an outlier than anyone. Now, the big thing is how much time are you willing to put in? And this is the the, the big part of this question, where is it if players are saying, hey, I really want to play like I love the game. Well, it's like if you loved it, why didn't you play three years ago? Why did you take two years off? Everyone has different circumstances, right? Sometimes it might be a family issue. You know, you might have had some personal problems. Maybe you had uh, some health issues. Maybe you had an injury. Maybe there's a lot of reasons you could have a couple year gap in your softball career. But a lot of times players, they just didn't really love it. And now they pick it back up. And sometimes you do miss the boat. So you have to ask yourself, are you really willing to put in all the work that's going to be necessary to not only catch up to players who've played a couple years more than you, and are you going to be able to put in the work and find the skills and the skills coaches to help you really get past that level? Because if you have, um, you know, three years less experience or two years less experience or four years less experience than other players your age, there's a lot you need to make up for. It's again, it's a complex sport. You need to understand you're, you're going to be missing out on a couple hundred games of repetitions where you just see different and experience different situations. You've seen all the different pitches pitchers can throw. You've faced really good hitters, et cetera. There's a really big lump of skills and experience that you get from playing games over all these years. So it's not to say that it's impossible if you, you know, lack three years of experience compared to your others, others in your age group. But you have to have a really dedicated plan to say, OK, here's how I'm going to make up for this. If I'm a 16 year old who just got started two years ago, or I'm a 14 year old 
and I'm just getting started now, or I'm 12 and I haven't played much. But again, 12 is like not that big of a deal. But you have to have a plan to say, all right, I've got to really accelerate my learning curve here. You know, if I'm going to be a really good, a good hitter and make the varsity team, or make the JV team, make the freshman team, make the college team, whatever, you've got to really get those reps in. You're going to have to work at least twice as hard as other players your age. And you're also going to have to really train smart. It's not just going to the batting cage and getting 300 swings a day. It's also about building a swing from the ground up. Do you know how to do that? Are you scouring the web like on YouTube? trying to find new drills to do new ways to understand your swing you're going to have to probably find a hitting coach or a pitching coach or and you're definitely going to have to have really good practice partners whether it's a parent whether it's a friend whether it's a grandpa grandma aunt uncle whoever someone to hit you a million ground balls and to throw you a million pitches to again to catch up so if you are joining softball late or if you had a gap couple years where you you know you lost experience relative to your teammates who were playing this whole time you have a lot of work to do. It's not an easy sport. That said, if you're really motivated and you are willing to put in more hours, significantly more hours of practice time than your peers, and you're willing to be a really deep student of the game, learning what you need to do, learning how to understand your swing, learning how to build pitching mechanics, learning how to be a better infielder, outfielder, then you can make up a lot of ground. I mean, I didn't have a a scholarship to play in college. I was a recruited walk-on no scholarship money as a freshman. I was basically the worst pitcher on the team. I didn't accept that. And I knew that if I just kept chugging along, gained a couple miles per hour on my fastball every year, improved my command a little bit each year, got bigger and stronger every year. If I just kept chipping away, then I could I could do something with my career. And I ended up getting, you know, seven years, six seasons of pro baseball with another injury gap year mixed in there. So even though I was the worst player on the team as a freshman in college in, in D1 baseball, which could be the same situation you might find yourself in as a young player, being someone who just barely made the JV team or the freshman team or the varsity team. That's not to say that your final chapters are written because they're not. You get to decide how your career ends. But you do need to understand that if you got started late for whatever reason, you've got a lot of ground to make up. And it's not just training hard, getting lots of hours and lots of reps. It's about really training smart and understanding what you need to do, understanding the game and and fixing the things that are wrong in your swing, your pitching mechanics, your fielding mechanics, getting faster, getting stronger, all that stuff. You'll have to do everything smarter, faster, harder, and better than all the, your other peers to catch up for time lost. All right. So hopefully this video is helpful. Just remember, all hope is not lost just because you got started late or maybe you missed a year or two, but there's going to be a very big commitment required by you to make up for lost time. So if you're ready to put that commitment in and really work your butt off, then go for it. You could still be what you want to be and have the softball career that you want. All right. Thanks for watching. And I'll see you here in the next video.